Hi there, it's Marzena. This video was about to be launched like three weeks ago, but my whole schedule this year is just crazy. Due to some delays here and there, I had to postpone or even cancel like half of my planned projects. For example, I wanted to make not one, not two, but three mermaids for this year's mermaid. And I made none. But better late than never. Let's make at least one of them today. Okay, let's dive in. I wanted to base this mermaid on a goldfish, specifically the black one. But because completely black vinyl is pretty hard to blush, I decided on a genifier long as a base. Her golden face will allow me to add some more details to the face up. First, however, I needed to prep her. I started as always by cutting her hair as close to the scalp as possible. Then I soaked her head for one minute in a freshly boiled water. This makes the head more squishy and easier to remove from the neck, without destroying the neck peg. Hot water also melts the glue inside the head, so it is pretty easy to remove the remaining hair plugs through the neck hole. After I removed the factory face with 100% acetone, it was time to shrink the head. I just dunked it into a jar with acetone and water solution, 9 to 1, 2 days of soaking, 2 days of drying, and repeat. Reroot time! I painted the scalp of my shrunken head black and fixed the paint job under a layer of watered-down mud podge. For her hair I bought those long braid extensions with a pretty black and gold ombre effect. For this reroot I used a longer needle than usual, cause I wanted to push inside the head as much of the black part as possible. It was my first ever reroute with synthetic hair, and I must say, please never again. The hair turned out nice, but I really didn't like its structure. And wow, they were heavy. But anyway, I did the reroute for a few rows at her hairline, and I left the middle part for the future styrofoam base so I could make the hair look flowy and underwater-like, not just straight and heavy. I glued in the wire for the base and squeezed a lot of high-tech glue inside the head to secure my new hair. I left the glue to dry and on the next day I brushed out the hair, kept them shorter, braided them so they wouldn't tangle and it was time for the head to go back on the body. I widened the neck hole, trimmed down the neck peg, sanded the neck a little and heated up the head with a hairdryer. Then I realized that the glue didn't dry at all. I have no idea what causes. Was it the hair type? Or just its amount inside the head? Or is my glue going bad? Anyway, after two additional days of glue drying, I reattached the head to the body and turned the doll into a cozy burrito. I sprayed her face with three layers of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat varnish and started with the face up. I know that huge eyes are a characteristic feature of this type of goldfish, but I like small eyes on my dolls, so I stick to the aesthetic that I like and try to give this girl smaller eyes anyway. It wasn't easy, cause Genafire has this face mold with sculpted eye shape, but I did what I could. 
I would like to use this face-up footage to talk about few things today. First, I want to go back to the head shrinking. People often say that shrunken heads are not good for rerouting, and they are giving up shrinking heads for the sake of rerouted hairstyle or vice versa. But as you can see, it is still possible to do both. Usually it is recommended to reroute the head before the acetone fully evaporates, and the vinyl will still have some elasticity in it. So with slow shrinking method, after let's say one day of drying. However, that doesn't mean that you have only this one particular day for it, or everything will be lost. The head that I'm working on here waited almost two months for the reroute after I shrunk it. Two months! When I finally had time to work on it, the vinyl was very hard. But no matter how long you wait, it will never be rock solid and you will always be able to punch through it with some sharp poking tool. Then you only need to push the hair through the hole with your regular reroute tool. Very easy, in fact. Second topic. Have you seen the leaked photos of the new Monster High dolls? I must say, I was so excited for the new line and had very high hopes for them. But I am so disappointed. They look cute, but also very simple and uninteresting to me. Are we really gonna get another line of Enchantimals and Cave Club dolls? Good for small kids to play, but also pretty much boring. I know that nothing is certain yet, but I am very skeptical now, to be honest. Of course, whatever makes kids happy, I guess. But old Monster High dolls were so popular for a reason. The last topic I want to talk about is my future Q&A video. I said that I will be leaving a pinned comment for your questions on my every video until I will reach 100k subscribers. But I decided that it will be easier for me to have all those questions in one place. So I will just leave a link to my previous video in the description box. You can go there and check out the pinned down comment. Give a like to the questions you really want me to reply to, or leave your own. I am really excited about this Q&A, so thanks in advance! I didn't have another exact same Gina Fire doll, but you can see the difference, right? I secured the hair and face under plastic wrap and went straight to the mutilation, I mean modifications. First, let's say bye-bye to her legs. There's no place to run anyway. I sanded down the plastic seams and factory numbers. I also roughed up the surface on her chest for the future boob job. I wanted her right hand to be touching her cheek, so I needed to widen the range of the movement in the elbow. Okay, so I wanted to make a stamp with a scale pattern just so I could use it on the sculpted pieces later. I mixed an impression silicone and pressed the cut-off leg onto it to make a negative of the scales. Just FYI, I could use gloves, but it wasn't necessary, because this is a dental silicone that's being used in a patient's mouth, so 100% safe and non-toxic. For a tail score, I inserted and glued a thick wire in a hole that I drilled in the doll's pelvis. I twisted the wire and bent it to my liking. I bought this sheet of Warbler Transpo Art for the fins, because I wanted them to be shifting from black to translucent. This is a pretty similar thermoplastic material to the regular Warblas, but it definitely sticks less to itself and I knew that that could be a problem later. In fact, everything about those fins was a problem. See, I wanted to paint the fins first and shape them after, because it is easier to paint straight lines on a flat surface. Well, maybe not for me, I guess. <laughs> I wanted to do a sandwich from Warbla with the paint job in the middle. 
It was supposed to secure the paint job and make the fence less flimsy. After all, our girl was supposed to be standing on that tail. Of course, it didn't work out. The paint prevented the warblast pieces from sticking to each other, and it was still way too flimsy. Let's try something else. I've seen someone make fins for a fish sculpture by heating up and shaping cured UV resin. Resin is hard, right? Well, I would say even too hard. No, 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 no. Yeah, I said fuck and I'm not even gonna beep it out. I spent like five days figuring out those fins. It was pretty sad. I was sad. I cried a lot. But I really didn't want to give up yet. And look, I finally did it. I was very proud of my persistence. Do you wanna know how I made it? Do you wanna? Do you wanna? I'm gonna tell you anyway. I cut the proper shapes out of a single sheet of Warbler Transpa Art. Used a little bit of heat to make them lie flat. Then I painted them. A little bit of black, the golden rays, a little bit of translucent yellow, and some black on top. After my paint job dried, I could use my heat gun and shape the fins to my liking. Acrylic paints have some elasticity after they are heated up, so the paint job didn't chip or crack. When the fins cooled down, I covered them in two layers of UV resin. I applied the resin in sections, so it wouldn't drip uh, uncontrollably. Yes, I didn't use gloves. Because the only thing that my hands are allergic to are the powdered gloves. It was like 35 Celsius degrees on my workshop that day, and it was almost impossible to squeeze into my powdered free ones. So I just tried my best not to touch the uncured resin. What a success! Of course I didn't forget about my mask and goggles and I worked with my window open, cause the resin fumes are bad and you don't want to have them in your eyes and lungs. When all the fins were ready, I just needed to glue the big ones together. I arranged them in a way that will allow my mermaid to stand on them by herself. Ok, I digressed a little, so let's go back to the body. I decided to reposition her torso, so I cut it in half with my cutting disc. And used a thick wire and hot glue to change the curvature of the spine. From my precious warbler scraps, I created the base for the tail. The wire that I'm inserting here will work as a big fence attachment. To make the tail smooth, I covered it with bigger warbler pieces. It's epoxy time! I mixed two equal parts of epoxy sculpt and I gave my doll a boob job. Then I covered the tummy gap and the transition part between tail and torso. She's a seductive kind of gal, so I gave her wide hips and even some booty. Not because it makes any sense, just because it is my mermaid and I wanted to do it. So yeah, a fish tail with a butt. Here and there I used my previously made scale stamp. On the next morning I gave my girl some sanding treatment and I could go to the scary part, attaching the fins. I prepared my arsenal of UV lamps and with some tinkering I managed to attach the big fins to the tail. As you can see, I glued some wire attachments to all the smaller fins so I could mark where I want to place them, drill the holes and just glue the fins in with a super glue.
With all the fans in place, I mixed some more epoxy and I covered the fans to tail connections with it. And I also added those teeny tiny scales on the sides of her bust. Okay, hear me out now. All this time when I was working on this girl, I was very pissed off at her hair. The head was so heavy and I had this anxious feeling that I will be struggling with them even more than I did with the fins. So I thought it through and decided to remove them. Easy peasy, took like 8 hours. I mostly used tweezers, so my fingers were numb for the next 2 or 3 days. I also used crampons, thread cutters and the best thing ever, those cutters that came with my 3D printer. They are for cutting off the supports from 3D models and they allowed me to cut those nasty hair almost at the scalp level. Back to the tail. I rolled many, many, many little balls of epoxy sculpt and created the scales, starting at the end of the tail and slowly going up. I also posed her arms and covered the joints with epoxy. I changed the concept a little bit, so no touching the face in the end. Okay, another fun part. I took my Zeta Plus and I created a border for the UV resin at the end of the big fins. Don't really know how to describe it. I wanted to make some sort of resin extensions that will be glued into my wooden stand. After I made the resin supports, I marked their placement on the wooden brick and drilled big holes for them. Did it work? Yay, it did! I put a lot of hot glue into those holes. I mean, a lot. Better safe than sorry. I wanted to give her something to hold in her right hand and decided that since she is a goldfish mermaid, the gold pirate coins will suit her just fine. I took a coin and with Zeta Plus, I created a little stamp. Then I made a bunch of tiny epoxy balls and flattened them with my stamp. I painted them later. But because we now have gold to go with our seducer, we also need to add some warning. After all, she doesn't look like just a giver, if you know what I mean. I printed and painted a few skulls and spines and glued them to the stand. I used my favorite kitty litter and wood glue mixture to create a sand effect. I glued the bones first, because I wanted them to be sinking into the sand. When the mixture cured, I painted the stand and gave my mermaid some base colors. Then I brushed some gold mica powder with a big foundation brush. I also painted her boobs and her tummy to match her face more. I covered the fence with a plastic wrap and sprayed the body with two layers of Mr. Super Clear. Then I could add shading and blushing with soft pastels and a small dots here and there, just like the ones I drew on her face. One more layer of varnish to secure everything and let's make her hair. Again. I prepared the hair wefts from 100% acrylic yarn. I also made this extension on a wire base that I attached to the head. Then I just glued the rest of the wefts, styled them a little bit in this wavy underwater look and sprayed the finished hairstyle with a hairspray. I printed and painted some rocks for the base and I also made those plants thingies. I attached them to the stand along with the golden coins that I made and that was it. 
My goldfish mermaid was done. Finally. This project was literally cursed. It took so much time, mostly because I was too upset or too scared to work on it at all. I spent so many days trying not to give up on the wavy translucent fins. The reroute took hours just to be removed anyway, which also took hours. In the end though, I'm really happy. Once again, I struggled, but I also pushed through. She ended up not exactly how I imagined, but it is still a very successful project for me. She feels etheric, seductive and magical, and that is what I was aiming for. And what do you think about my little man-eater? Would you let her seduce you with her booty? I mean, of course, the pirate's booty. I hope that you enjoyed this cursed process. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. If you like this creation, please give this video a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe to my channel if you are curious of what I'm gonna do next. If you have a question that you want me to answer to in my Q&A, check out my centaur video and my pin down comment there. Thank you guys for watching and see you soon! Chciałoby się popracować. No ale koty tam leżą.